Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this Unity video I'm going to show you guys how to set up and use a screen fader. So this is going to be uh, basically a script I wrote for it, and I'll go ahead and demonstrate it first, and then we'll talk about how it actually works. So when we hit play, you'll notice that uh, basically it fades in, almost seemingly automatically. Uh, what's actually going on there is that I created a very, very brief fade in script over here. It's not the screen fader itself, but it tells the screen fader to go ahead and uh, basically play its fade in animation. Now from there, we also have the fade out screen button, which is going to tell the, fade, uh, the screen fader to play its fade out animation. And you can see, works pretty much fine. So if I hit play there, and let's see, uh, well, let's just kind of show you the screen fader, and then we'll get into the script. So the screen fader, I was including as part of the canvas. So there is actually an image here, and this image basically is on the bottom of the canvas list because we want it to uh, be in front of everything else in the canvas. Whatever's on bottom is actually what shows on top for whatever reason. Um, so if you have buttons that are showing on the canvas, the screen fader is going to show above those. Now because the screen fader is on top of everything, it's very important that your image uh, does not include a raycast target. Because if you want any of these buttons, to, well, probably important anyway, because if the raycast target is the screen fader, then everything underneath it will be unpressable. Um, might be okay if you put your buttons above it. If you have like a game over screen and you want to fade into a game over, what you should do is have your canvas game over component be below the screen fader and then that should work out there. And then we have the screen fader script, which is going to reference this animator. Um, there are multiple ways you could do uh, basically very basic uh, fading animations inside of Unity. One is to use the animator, which I think would be the preferred way. Alternatively, you could grab reference to this image component and manually set it to change its uh, alpha transparency over a set duration, things like that. But basically, that's what animators are for to begin with, to um, control the position, the color, the um, alpha, of different components over time for you, so you don't have to script everything like that. So with the screen fader, I have a bunch of different scripts, and uh, well, not scripts actually, these are animations, and then we have the animator controller right here, and an extra animator controller, which actually isn't necessary there, because that uh, this whole package you're seeing right here, I was bringing it over from my heart battle game, um, so I'm pretty sure we can just go ahead and delete that uh, we'll leave everything else alone. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump into the script now, and we'll talk a little bit about what this script does and how I achieved it. So first off, um, let's see. One of the main things you might notice is that I have an enum declared for fades. Um, this is just an easier way of keeping track of all of the different fades you have. And then once you have a fade, um, basically I was starting a coroutine, fade coroutine that uses a fade. And depending on what fade that is, that's the trigger that's going to get set inside of the animator. So you have a fade with the uh, basically enum of fade n. So that's going to convert to a string down here, and then that trigger is going to get set in the animator. And it'll basically wait until the animator declares that it's no longer fading. Um, or actually, it's not the animator that does that. It's an animation event I'll show you in a minute which comes back in here and then calls animation complete. So all of these fades, the actual animations for them, call animation complete when they're done, which sets it's fading to false. Um, uh, I guess there's a delegate here, which would be actually unused, I think, uh, where would, if there's any events to call in this delegate, then it would go ahead and do that. Uh, but otherwise, if it's null, ignore that. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. So it calls the fade by setting the trigger on the animator, and then when that animation's done, it calls animation complete as an animation event, and that basically sets this to false, and it finishes this fade coroutine, and that's it. So 
it's not so much code as it is animations here actually so I'll show you the animator um, could probably do this a little bit more organized but what I have it basically doing is depending on what trigger you set no matter what state it's in it can transition into one of these different fades so if you set the fade in trigger it's going to go straight into the screen fader fade in animation uh, same with box in all the other ones um, they just uh, a little, little bit different ways of uh, fading the screen. Um, of course, using the same image component to do it by scaling it, setting the color, that kind of junk. So let's actually go ahead and see if we can take a look at some of these animations. So fade in is very basic. Just over the course of a second, you transition from full alpha down to no alpha, and then that would basically be no screen fader over the rest of the screen, so you can see it, and that's the most basic kind of fade in you can do. Then at the end, we have an animation event here. You can add more events by hitting add event, and that allows you to call basically um, any method that that script has uh, with some limitations. I'm not sure if you can pass in all kinds of parameters, uh, but if you have one that's like public void animation complete, no arguments, then that should be fine, and then that, that just gets called at the end of an animation. The rest of them, pretty similar. Um, so we can go ahead and see if this box out animation works. The idea here is basically that um, place around with the scales in order to achieve that. So let's, let's see if that does it. Okay, of course the image has to be created still. So it kind of does something? Not entirely sure, actually. <laughs> anyway, the, the main thing you got to focus on here is uh, fade in and fade out. Um, the rest of the stuff, you can kind of customize it with, if you want to manage the size, whatever. Uh, I'm not going to go and fix all these animations for this test scene specifically, though I will include them in a zip file down below. If you want to mess with them, get them to work. It's a pretty good project for you guys. Um, and now you might be wondering, why is this image component set to off by default? Well, because if you have it on, it covers everything else in the canvas and you can't work with it. So what I actually have as one line in the screen fader script is uh, whenever it starts, so that should be on awake, you get the image component and you set it equal to true. So basically when the game starts, the image component is set to true, and that'll be fine because the first thing you're doing um, as you launch this game in the fade in script, uh, that's the one where when the game starts, you start the fade in script, basically same frame. And I attach that to scene manager, though you could put that anywhere. Uh, you could even call it as an event. Oh, and just to show you, um, for calling the button, I have the screen fader referenced and screen fader dot start fade. But you notice um, there's only one with a string. Even though I have types enum, the default event system inside of Unity, for some reason, does not allow you to declare enums as a valid parameter. I mean, you can still have it be an enum in script, but you won't be able to reference the enum version. So ideally, I would want to just pass like uh, the enum value, because then you can never mess up by giving it a wrong string name. Um, but to get around that, I basically just convert the string into an enum and then start the fade up here just as normal. There are some packages out there which can kind of enhance uh, how uh, like on-click events and that kind of thing can trigger in your scripts. Uh, probably go take a look for them, uh, asset store, Google search, that kind of thing. Uh, but the default one would not allow you to use the fades uh, fade method inside of the button. That's unfortunate. I do hope they fix that. But uh, hopefully here I've given you a pretty good idea of how you can use the uh, fade in and fade out by creating a screen fader inside of Unity. Something seems to have happened here. Ah, I think it's because... Actually, let's figure that out. So no sprite there. Is that why? Does it need a UI sprite? I think that might be it. Let's try that one more time. Huh. 
So as it turns out, I was running into some issues where when you have the image script here turned off, and then you try to enable it in game, it wasn't actually working consistently. I know it was working earlier in the video. Uh, but anyway, if you're running into that same issue where unchecking this means you can't get the image script to respond at all, uh, another alternative you can do is to have the screen fader set to zero alpha by default, and then when the screen fade in animation kicks in, it starts off in the first frame by setting the alpha to one, or basically 255 full alpha, um, and then it fades back down to zero. So that was, that's another option you can go with rather than just disabling the image script. But yeah, hopefully that's enough for you guys to get it to work. I'll uh, throw a zip file down below. Feel free to include it in your game, edit it, uh, whatever you want to do with it. In any case, I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys in my future Unity content.